Good morning, Bristol. Today, we're going to take a few minutes to talk about the upcoming planning board articles on the 2023 ballot. We'll be voting on Tuesday, March 14th at the historic town hall. The planning board has proposed 10 amendments. And with me this morning is Denise DeStefano, the chair of the planning board. And we've asked her to help us break these down into bite-sized pieces. Good morning, Denise. Good morning, Bruce. How are you today? Doing absolutely wonderful. Great. So we've got a busy ballot coming up. We're mm -hmm. going to be voting at the historic town hall on March 14th. And what I'd like to do is walk through each of the articles as they appear on the ballot. Okay. And the planning board materials start with Article 2. And it talks about manufactured storage containers. Can you tell us what this article is and why we're voting on it? Right. Well, the um, right now, manufactured storage containers allow for an owner to have one manufactured storage container on their uh, property. So we've gone through and taken a look at what makes the most sense. And the ballot, uh, Article 2 on the ballot, it's to allow the landowner the right to have no more than two manufactured storage containers on their land for up to 90 days. If they want to keep it longer than 90 days, they must apply for and obtain a special exception from the zoning board or have a valid land use permit for construction or demolition. So if somebody's building a new home, demoing, then we will allow the containers on their lot for the period of time that is going to take. But otherwise, 90 days or a special exception. Article three on the ballot deals with some issues with the Board of Adjustment and zoning. Membership seems to be a bit of a challenge in Bristol. Can you explain a little bit about why we're changing these numbers? Uh, well, yes. As you know, across the country, volunteerism is down. Um, and we seem to have a great deal of difficulty with all of our boards in getting people willing to serve. And sometimes people just want to test drive it for a little bit, and they're happy to serve as an alternate to observe and get a sense as to what's involved in their service on a board. Right now, the zoning board only allows for three alternates. We'd like to increase, increase that to five alternates so that if we have some good interest, we can have more people. Um, willing to sit and learn about what's involved. And we're removing the require, requirement for term limits. Um, as difficult as it is to get volunteers to serve on the boards, um, it makes sense to remove the requirement for term limits because um, if we have experienced willing residents that want to continue serving on a board, um, then we should make that uh, permissible for them to do so. And that's why we're addressing those two things for the zoning board. Huh. Now, on to Article 4 on the ballot. The word office seems to have gotten lost in translation, especially with home office and pandemic use. Mm -hmm. Explain, what have we got happening here? Well, right now, the definition of office in our ordinance is as follows. The buildings, rooms, or series of rooms in which the affairs of a business, professional person, branch of government, etc., carry out their duties. Well, as you can imagine, some of us will see that one way, others will see it another. So we're just changing the definition of office to make it clear that it does not mean an office in your home that you work from remotely. It, in order to qualify as an office, it has to be open to the public, to customers, or clients. So that's really all we're doing there. So that seems like a little bit of housekeeping. It is. Now, Article 5 is a little question about waivers from the planning board. And that seems to have been a little bit of a whoops somewhere along the way. It, it is a whoops, I'll tell you. I don't know how long it's been in the zoning ordinance, but 
town council when she was reviewing the zoning ordinance for us this year and, and the various amendments we were proposing, she picked up on that and she said, you as a planning board don't have the right to do that. We need to take that out. So that's really all it is. It's housekeeping. It's something we're not allowed to do. Um, so there's no sense to have it in the zoning ordinance. Okay. Number six, article six also seems to be a little bit of housekeeping and talks about the overlay district wetlands maps and where they're found. Right. And at one time, apparently those maps could be found or reviewed by going to the town clerk's office, which is no longer the case. You have to come to the land use department. Um, so we're just simply stating where you can find them at the town office if you want to come and look at them. Then let's move on to Article 7 and talking about some rather technical issues of wetlands. These are, we had to do a few changes to the um, wetlands, wetlands Conservation Overlay District this year. Um, some of it is regards to changes in the way things are done. And um, so taking a look at it, Article 7 is we're just identifying the criteria to be used when conducting a field study to dispute the location of a wetlands on the parcel. So right now, if somebody wants to do something on a parcel of land, they look at the town map and see where the, where the wetlands are delineated, if there are any wetlands on that parcel. If a professional working with them comes to them and says, well, these town maps are wrong, there aren't any wetlands there, Obviously, we're not just going to take their word for it. So they have to have a field study done, and we're just identifying the criteria they have to use in that field study. Um, if they can prove that the town maps are wrong, then we change the town maps. Um, the second thing that we changed in that um, section was to identify the type of scientist that must conduct the field study. Is it a certified wetland scientist or a certified soil scientist? And we have identified that it has to be a certified wetland scientist to do that work. Well, it certainly seems to protect the valuable land that we have in Bristol. And number eight on the ballot talks about notifications to agencies. Please help us understand that one. Yes, um, and number eight, there are times that the planning board has to notify certain agencies, but we don't have to notify all of the agencies on every application. And what I mean by agencies, it could be um, an, an adjacent town if a property happens to border both towns. It could be more of a, if it's something that's a regional impact, well, then that's spelled out by statute as to how we follow that notification. But we don't have to do them, all agencies, for every application, and that's all we're making clear here. Oh. Then Article 9 talks about removing some language and dealing with assessments. Help us out. Yes, that's another one council picked up on. Um, it bas basically the zoning ordinance does say that um, you know how a certain district is going to be assessed. Well, that's not how it's done. It's not. It, it shouldn't be in the zoning ordinance. It's not where it belongs. And council advised that we should remove that. Um, it's totally irrelevant. And moving on to our last item, Article Ten uh, talks about off-premises signs for businesses help us out here too. Right. This one's going to allow for some off-premises signs to be permitted without the need for a special exception, again, through the zoning board. And what we've done, sandwich board signs seems to be pop, seem to be popping up a lot more in the town. Um, we're seeing a lot of them in the downtown area. We see a lot of them along Lake Street at some of the other businesses as well. And we just wanted to add some criteria for allowing the sandwich board signs. So we're making sure that they're not blocking a sidewalk, that they're heavy enough um, construction wise so that they can't become a projectile in a, you know, on a windy day and things like that. 
Um, so that's really all we're doing there is just saying, here's when, why, and how you can have sandwich board signs to advertise your business. So the essence of all of these are the planning board has recommended a yes vote on all of them right. in order to clean up our zoning ordinance a little bit. And Denise, any other comments you might offer about the role of the planning board and how people who might be interested can get involved? Oh, we'd love it. Um, we do have, we are allowed up to five alternates mm -hmm. on the planning board. We only have one at the moment. Um, you may remember a couple of years ago, we actually had an item on the ballot to reduce the size of the planning board because we were having such difficulty getting members and being able to have a quorum at each meeting. So we reduced the size of the planning board from um, seven to five, which means we only need three members in the room to have a quorum. Um, we left our alternates at five. We only have one. We'd love it if people are interested. You can come to any meeting and sit in and watch. Um, the town office staff and the land use department are always available to answer questions. I'm always available if somebody's interested. We do meet twice a month, which is, I think we're the only board that meets twice a month. Um, so it's, it, it's a bit of a time commitment, but the work is very rewarding. And if you have any interest at all, I would encourage you to reach out and see what it's all about and see if it might work for you, even as an alternate. We'd love to have you. Well, thank you very much, Denise. Thank and you, to Bruce. those watching, please remember voting on these articles and other items on the ballot Tuesday, March 14th at the Historic Town Hall, and then Saturday, March 18th, the town meeting at the high school. Look forward to seeing you there. And to all, have a great day. Thank you, Bruce.